There's too much snow on one side of the country and not enough on the other. The lack of snow in California is already worsening the devastating drought there. Our meteorologist Paul Goodlow is in the state now with climate scientists trying to work out a new battle plan. Hi, Paul. Hey, Matt. I'm here at Heavenly Ski Resort setting at the bottom of the World Cup run. Yeah, great snowmaking here at Heavenly, but the concern is what we don't have from the sky, from Mother Nature, snowpack and natural snow. In fact, they just did their first snow survey about a week ago, and they recorded only 20% of the typical average snowpack they should have through this date. That's a huge concern as you look forward for the rest of the winter and then the drier summer months. Again, that is not looking good for the water resources. This could be the third straight below average winter. That's a huge concern for people who rely on the snowpack to melt for uh, water for industry, for agriculture, even water to, to drink and brush your teeth. So it's a huge concern out here. But I'm here for the Operation Sierra Storm Conference, and we're hearing the latest from uh, climate scientists, from research scientists about what's going on in terms of global warming, as well as what's going on in terms of forecasting when the next storms could hit here in California. Now, typically on weather.com, you can get a seven, even a, almost a 10 day forecast, but the accuracy really is in that, say, uh, one to four or five day range. But what about if you could have a forecast that could uh, forecast for the next two or four weeks, especially when it comes to big storms hitting here in California? Well, we talked to a researcher earlier about what that is. It's called the Madden Julian Oscillation and how that can forecast atmospheric rivers, and that could really turn around what we're dealing with right now, which is a very low snow year is a very big storm system that develops in the tropics on a massive scale, hundreds of thousands of kilometers. And it starts in the Indian Ocean and it makes things very wet and disturbed there. And then it propagates very slowly across the equator, across the maritime continent into the Pacific Ocean. And the key to that is the whole process takes about six to eight weeks. And just like El Nino provides some forecasting imprint on, on our mid-latitude weather and so forth, the MJO does the same thing. But the difference is the MJO takes only a few weeks to develop and go through its whole life cycle, and El Nino is much longer. Reporting from Heavenly Valley here in uh, South Lake Tahoe, California, I'm Paul Goodlow. Matt, back to you. All right, thanks, Paul. You can learn more about this devastating drought on the Weather Channel and on weather.com. I'm Matt Sampson, The Weather Channel.